speak. Okay. Listen, as uh, if I can ha just have your attention. If I can have your attention here as, as we're getting ready to gather and before we go uh, live video. Just want to remind you folks, all, uh, all, all eyes this way. Attention up here. Yeah, thank you. Just want to remind you that uh, you know, for the next several weeks, we will try to maintain the protocol where we all come in uh, the door off the ramp as you did today. In our leaving, we ask you that you would exit this way, either out the ramp here or out this door. It takes you to the uh, parking lot right out this way by stairs. So the ramp or the stairs, we're maintaining that one-way traffic for a while uh, while we're still in the COVID protocol. That kind of keeps us safe and, and clean and everything. Later on, too, we'll have a, a children's story time. I see we have some kids today. Good to see you guys. And I put some blankets or beach towels up here to uh, be socially distanced. And that's a spot where the kids could sit. You can sit as a family together. And uh, we'll see if we have others that, that come in. Um, and then offering time. We will not pass the offering plate. But there are plates in, in and around the rooms. And you can do that coming or going, as you come in or as you leave, we thank you for, for that. So just some of the, some of the ground rules as, uh, as we make our way through the protocol that keeps us healthy and safe. Well, good morning. My name's Kevin Lance, and I'm the pastor here at Steele Memorial Church. We're glad that you're here. We're filling up our uh, sanctuary today. This is our first week back after several months. Uh, we have been cautious, uh, but we are now 
back and sitting in the pews as we continue to practice the protocol of social distancing and wearing masks. But it's good to see some faces. I tell you, it throws me off a little bit. It's been a while. <laughs> but it's, a, it's a, welcome, a welcome encounter. We're glad that you're here. And just I want to remind you, those of you who are at home and worshiping, you can visit our church website to uh, receive one of the, a copy of our worship program. Within the program, you'll see some of the announcements, the order of worship, along with our prayer list and other important information. And we're glad that you are able to connect with us in that way. Also would want to share with you the opportunity for uh, some Lent studies. We are in the first Sunday, and we're in the first Sunday of Lent. And uh, we have a couple of opportunities. The one uh, class, which is a Zoom session featuring Andy Stanley's teaching. Andy Stanley is a uh, head lead pastor at North Church in Atlanta, Georgia. And it, we're learning on why Easter matters. And you can connect with that by contacting Claren, Claren Perkins. She can send you a, a Zoom invitation. And that's this evening at, uh, no. Okay, I'm sorry, Sunday morning. So be sure that you can get connected with, uh, with the group tomorrow or next week. Thank you. And then Kathy Connor will also be doing a Lenten study. And you can connect with Kathy again by Zoom meeting. And she can send you the link or the invitation. That's on Tuesday evenings for those who would want to be a part of that. As we continue through some of the announcements, we just want to remind you again, we are on radio 97.9 The River FM station uh, each Sunday at 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock in the morning. And so you uh, are able to connect with us in that way. We also, uh, again, I, as we mentioned already, we, we are in the midst of the restart. And I think our, uh, I believe our young adult Sunday school class is planning to gather and get people together uh, starting next Sunday morning. So keep, uh, keep an ear out for that and you'll hear more information as we move towards that. In the way of our prayer concerns, I wanted to share with you, uh, we have several on our list including uh, Amy Ryder. Amy's been in and out of the hospital a couple times this week, high blood pressure and some vision problems. We also have Amy Jarvis on our list and Amy Heron Cole. So we just uh, want to lift these up. Uh, Mildred Maynard has a niece, Jewel, who's also a cancer patient. We want to remember Vicki Delp. Vicki uh, having a, a procedure this week at the hospital. We think of uh, Phyllis Argebright. Phyllis had good news after her surgery at uh, Cleveland Clinic, and she's been declared cancer-free. So we're thankful for that after several years of cancer treatment. Praise God for that. And other cancer patients that we know, uh, Brenda Morning and uh, Monica Jackson, among those in our church family. So uh, we certainly have a, a, a variety and a, and a lot of people we want to remember. Bobby Bannister as well. He's having some uh, issues this morning, and we think of him uh, with a kidney stone. And you know, many of you know how uh, problematic that can be. So let's just take a moment as we bow our heads and remember us quietly in, in your own time, in your own way, uh, the concerns that you might bring before the Lord. Father, in your mercy... Hear our prayers, and may your strength and your healing presence, may your, may your presence be very near and close to those whose names we have shared and others we remember before you in our hearts, that we might know your courage, your comfort, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, friends, this is a very special place. This place on this day, this worship day, sanctified by the worship of saints here for over 60 years. 
thousands of souls have gathered throughout the years to sing songs of praise, to hear the word expressed, taught, and preached, to kneel and to bow their heads in prayer here in this very space. Thousands who have come and have responded by surrendering leadership in their hearts to the Spirit of God, to Jesus Christ as their Savior. And you, you have waited for this day. This is a kind of homecoming when we would be surrounded by the community of faith and to feel the presence of what this space has meant to us throughout the years. This place makes it easy for us to worship God, surrounded by the rich vibrations of of God's Spirit. So let us give thanks in this place and this time, and let us worship God with all of our hearts. We're going to stand as we join together in singing 10,000 reasons, reasons to praise God. You can sing, hum, or just uh, follow along with the words as we stand to sing.
seated. I want to invite our children to come on up. As I had shared before, some of our kids got here. We're going to separate you on blankets. You want to again just grab a blanket with your sister and brother. Or we've got a couple others want to come. Yeah, pardon. Yeah, okay. Are you going to do a story? Uh, let me. I was going to give you a chair. Okay. That makes it easier. You're not as old as I am. Okay. You just uh, sit on one of the beach towels here. Okay. I'm going to have to give you that there, too. I'm sorry. Let me see what number it is. Number three, It's it's. Uh, we're going to turn it on up there. Number three. Is it on? Yeah. Okay. So this week we get to go to church and we get to go back to school. That's a pretty good week, isn't it? Yeah, and we haven't been able to be in church or in school for a long time. Last week, did anything happen at your house, maybe? Um, that My power went out. Your power went out. Yours didn't? So you guys were lucky. But our power went out, and so we're going to talk a little bit about when you feel out of control. Okay, so what is this? A flashlight. And I can just push a button to turn the light on and off, right? Okay. If the batteries go out, what can I do? Let me say that. You could put it in other batteries. Yeah, I can get more batteries and put batteries into my flashlight, right? Who controls this flashlight? You. Yeah, I control this flashlight, and I can turn it on, and I can turn it off. But when we lost power, what could I do? Could I turn my power back on? No. Could I turn my lights on? Could I get a new battery and just flip my lights on? No. No. So we did not have control of that. Just like with COVID, we haven't had control of when we're going to school. We haven't had control of when we get to go to church. Um, so sometimes it doesn't feel very good to be feeling out of control, does it? But who is in control always? God. God. God is always in control. So when you want help with something, what should you do? Pray. You should pray to God and ask him to be in control because sometimes it just doesn't feel good when we don't know how to handle things, right? And we can't just turn a light back on or we can't go back to school and see our friends. So today we're just going to talk a little bit about what we can do and ask God to help us when we feel like we're, things are out of control, right? Okay, will you pray with me? Say, dear God, thank you for your love and guidance, and help me to know that you are always in control. Amen. Thank you, Whitney Stead, who did our, ki our children's sermon today. Thank you all for coming up. All right, thank you. I want to read today from our uh, gospel lesson as we continue our way through Matthew. We're in chapter 14 at verse 22 to 33. This is following the feeding of the 5,000, uh, the miracle uh, story that we heard last week. Immediately after feeding the 5,000, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake while he sent the people home. 
after sending them home, he went up into the hills by himself to pray. Night fell while he was there alone. Meanwhile, the the disciples were in trouble far away from land, for a strong wind had risen, and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them, walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified. In their fear, they cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid, he said. Take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw the strong wind and the waves, he was terrified. And began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? When they climbed back into the boat, the wind stopped. Then the disciples worshipped him. You really are the Son of God, they exclaimed. Now this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you bow your heads as we pray? Eternal God, you who feed the hungry and satisfy the thirsty, you befriend the lonely and walk with those who are desperate Comfort those who are afraid. You call out to us when we are troubled. We have no need that you cannot meet. You lift us up when we are depressed. You encourage us when we are anxious. And your peace calms us when we are embattled. Your faithfulness, Lord, is no accident. And our faith in you is not born out of chance. Though we test you at every turn, we bargain with you and try your patience, we abandon you or blame you, you continue to be our loving Father, pursuing us in spite of ourselves. I'll just take a moment to in quiet time to pray as you bring your own thoughts to God. And Lord, bless your church today as it continues to struggle to make ancient truth relevant to new times and new problems. And especially we pray asking that you might bless those who we have lifted up before you privately and publicly, that you will keep us in your care, embrace us, embrace us, that your arms might wrap around us and help us find a place on your lap, O Lord, that we might hear the rhythm of your heart, your spirit, through Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. You know, the day for Jesus began arriving at a deserted place in order to pray. But 10,000 people walked 10 miles to that same deserted place to see Jesus. Instead of finding time and space for his grief, he responded to the needs of the people, healing and feeding them. That same evening, he dismissed his disciples and the people and found time to pray in private. And so all this took place in one long day, finishing with his walking across water to the disciples in their boat. 
If you listen closely, Jesus insisted the disciples get in the boat without him and head to the other side. He insisted. Odd that he would insist, knowing that a storm was brewing over the waters of the Galilean Sea. But it was for quiet time in prayer with the Father that Jesus had come to this place. Now friends, if Jesus Christ, the Son of God, sensed the need for longer times in prayer with the Father, how much more should we also consider the same? I wonder if Jesus prayed for the disciples at that point. The Bible tells us the disciples were in trouble far from land. The winds and the waves were unmanageable. Those who could certainly were manning the oars in order to keep from sinking and, I imagine, praying. So it's been at least six hours. The disciples have been straining and pulling at the oars and Jesus continues in prayer at his place outdoors, though the rains have come, and everyone is exhausted. Keep in mind, the disciples are doing exactly what Jesus had told them to do. So you could say they were following the will of God, and the storm came upon them anyway. But that's, that's true of life. The storms come upon the just and the unjust. But something's going on here that's not really clearly stated. They, they had been in immediate danger long before this third hour of the night. So what do you, what do you suspect? Jesus is teaching the boys something. Some have said Jesus needed to teach them to trust him and to obey his command no matter what might befall them. And they were doing what he told them to do. And so they could trust him to take care of them. And here's a thought. We don't need to turn back when storms arise no matter how terrible the trial. Christ is able to take the trials of life and turn them into opportunities. The trials we endure give us experience with faith. And that's not a small thing. If you haven't yet learned this powerful truth, the Bible will prepare you, and I want to read from Romans chapter 5, we can rejoice when we run into problems and trials. Rejoice when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. Jesus walks into the harshest conditions and disciples are, are frightened when they see him. It was quite unexpected. And what does Peter blurt out? Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Now, why do you think Peter even asks that, this question? Isn't he saying, get me out of this boat? He wanted to be saved. And he believed Jesus could save him. Picture this. The physical... And the mental exhaustion that the, the hours of struggle for survival against the storm. <clears throat> the, the, uh, the fear that strikes when thoughts of death face a person for so many long unbroken hours. 
and the shock and, and the straining against the odds. Peter now thought he was dying. He was a man in, in such condition. He wants to be saved and, and delivered. And so Peter made his way over the railing. And it wasn't just the first step because the original language tells us that the words that are used said he, he was making progress toward Jesus. But then he saw the wind. He saw the threat. And Peter's faith has faded. Peter saw Jesus, his hope of being saved, and he knew that Jesus cared and loved him and had the power to save him. And he had his eyes on Jesus. And he, but when he took his eyes off Jesus and he really began to see the storm and the impossibility of what's happening here, he's walking on top of the water, his faith began to weaken. He began to entertain doubts. His fear began to rise and he began to sink. And verse 30 tells us Peter was terrified. And we need to hear that fear is the defeater of faith. It's the lesson we've heard since we were children. He took his eyes off Jesus and he allowed the immediate circumstances to blind him of the hope he had when he first slipped over the railing just moments ago. But Je Jesus did what Jesus does. Reaching out his hand, Jesus saved Peter while he was afraid. He saved Peter so he wouldn't be afraid. He saved him so Peter would know that Jesus would save him. But Jesus also explained a little problem to Peter. You have so little faith. Why did you doubt? Why did you doubt me? Once they got back in the boat, after they got back in the boat, the sea was quieted. And the disciples worshipped him. I like that. But we ought to spend a little time with what can jeopardize your faith. We're talking, of course, about, about fear. Now, there are legitimate things to fear. Some of the things we fear include the tests from our, uh, the test results from our doctor's last exam. <coughs> COVID virus has us in a dither. We fear financial loss. Some of you fear the future or change in your living arrangements. We may fear death, abandonment, losing a loved one, being left behind. Or the fear losing your position in your work or your place in the community. Patrick Morley writes about fear in his excellent book, Man in the Mirror. And many of you, he writes, could have begun a new project, a marriage, or, or a new job with faith and confidence, only to find yourself later in the middle of a storm. When you first started, the horizon looked bright. But sometime later, you, you kind of took a, a look around at your real surroundings and you saw the wind. Your new reality was the first step into the cycle of fear. <clears throat> when he saw the wind, Peter was afraid. The second step in the, in the cycle of fear is your response. And with a new perception of wind or, or danger... Fear was his response. The third step in the cycle of fear is the result of that fear or the result of your, of your response. And in Peter's case, he began to sink. And you can find yourself sinking 
in despair or depression or anger and rage. And when the winds struck with force that stopped you in your tracks, you thought, Peter thought, Jesus wasn't enough. We saw the wind, we saw the threat, and we started to sink. Now Peter was no fool. He knew when he began to sink, he should cry out to the Lord, Lord, Lord save me! This simple prayer is our fourth step. And that's your return. Your, your return to the life saver. And when you're beginning to sink with fear and problems, do you remember to return to the source of your hope and strength? At least one artist believes Peter may have been in deep trouble in deep water. We're looking at a picture here in the sanctuary by Yong Sung Kim. The, it's titled The Hand of God. And I love this painting because this could only be envisioned by one who was deep in trouble, but he knows someone who pulls him out of the trouble, standing on top of the water and reaching below to snag Peter or you and me the Bible tells us that without hesitation, Jesus reached out his hand and caught Peter. And this is the final step in the cycle of fear, your rescue. And whether you are saved in this life through physical healing, saved by some uh, remarkable breakthrough, or whether your healing is rising into glory after breathing your last breath on earth. Jesus doesn't seem to see any difference because the glory of heaven is so real to Him that He knows it's a comfort, it will be a comfort for you. He knows you have nothing to fear. In fact, Peter, or I'm sorry, the Apostle Paul wrote about this in Philippians chapter 1, I trust that my life will bring honor to Christ whether I live or die. For to me, living means living for Christ. And, and dying, well, dying is even better. If I live, I can, I can do more fruitful work for Christ. I'm torn between two desires. I long to go and be with Christ, which would be far better for me. And Paul affirms that your ultimate destination through faith in Jesus Christ is better than anything yet we have experienced. It is better yet. Maxie Dunham said in one of his books, nothing takes the, f takes the fear out of life so much as an awareness deep within of God's nearness and His loving concern. The awareness that He loves you. Everyone struggles with a cycle of fear. But listen, listen. You can decrease the amount of time you spend in that cycle by following this charge from Jesus. Take courage. I am here. Do not be afraid. Our daughter Courtney sent me a, uh, a piece of news from the Williamsburg, Virginia newspaper this week. If you know a little bit about, about us, you know that Kim and I really enjoy that part of uh, American history, the early part as our nation was formed, as it, and it really comes alive in the colonial village at, at Williamsburg. <coughs> The article described a new archaeological dig that had uncovered some bone fragments, which was what they were looking for, they, what they believed were bones from the first black church in the area, both uh, slaves and free, 
black people. The oral tradition that had been passed down for hundreds of years was that this ground where they were excavating was the church cemetery. It had already been disrupted and damaged in the past. But understand this. I'm thinking about, <coughs> about the, the, the black church at a period in time when uh, they experienced such brut brutality. The slaves <coughs> that were working plantation fields all over Virginia for over 150 years before the Revolutionary War found hope in their faith in Jesus Christ. But you have to ask, you know, how do you explain Christian faith when someone's suffering and, and among the enslaved? I mean, how do you explain how anyone could come to experience hope in the midst of such lasting and brutal oppression, hatred, poverty, and pain when all of life was dictated by the cruel powers that demanded more than what the human body could give day after day, month after month, year after year. And it was still possible to believe in and to worship a loving God. That amazes me, though it shouldn't. But they believed in a God who could perform miracles. A God who loved them and taught them to love their enemies. In fact, they loved God and praised Him because of what was happening in their interior life. Even though they knew slavery... But that was the miracle, what was happening inside. Their hearts were set free. While their bodies were enslaved to work until they crumpled in exhaustion, inside they were free. Their spirits were set free by the Spirit of God within them. And I don't think we give enough attention in the church today to the filling of the Spirit, which was their experience. While their bodies were groaning with illness and fatigue, their spirits were able to give praise to God. Amen? They and thousands of others like them were living examples of what we already read from Romans chapter 5, and we have to, we have to revisit it. We can rejoice when we run into problems and trials for we know that these problems and trials help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope, this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Because, listen to this, because He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. Now they could look around at their circumstances and there was such little hope from the physical, material world. They had reason to be afraid. But they trusted ultimately in the Lord Jesus Christ. And their faith was not in vain. For the Holy Spirit filled their hearts with God's love. You saw, we, we saw what, what the Bible said. He has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with His love. So how are you going to get to the place of trusting and praising in the midst of the, so of the storms that surround you? <clears throat> Once I, uh, 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 and thousands of others like me, uh, we experienced hate and anxiety. You know, there was a time in my life when I knew the inner conflict that just disrupted life. I, you know, I, ex I experienced intolerance and indifference, vengeance and shame, anger and so much more. But after I surrendered my life to Christ to pledge loyalty to Jesus Christ, 
I found a change of character taking place inside my mind and my heart. The change is what the Bible calls the filling of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and it has very little to do with what some call the charismatic gifts of speaking in tongues, but everything to do about being a full, well-rounded son or daughter of the kingdom of God. The Bible tells us that the filling of the Spirit will produce in you the fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control, and so much more. Listen. God uses special events and experiences or crises to capture your attention in order to give you a chance to abandon yourselves so that you embrace Him through the brokenness and the storms. In fact, a lot of people can experience multiple crises before the fourth step, your return, and the fifth step, your rescue. Certainly the disciples find this to be true as we follow them through the gospel story all the way to the final stop when they were hiding in fear in the upper room after Jesus had ascended until they were filled by the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. And then they burst forth into the world uh, with a bold courage that could never be rattled. So fear, fear then serves as a trigger to cry out to God. And don't short circuit the opportunities of brokenness that God may intentionally place in our lives. These may not be random or accidental. These reveal to you and me who we are, why we're here, where we're going, and how God might be speaking into your life. Let your faith be strengthened and shaped through prayer, reading God's message to you as He shapes lessons that you find in the New Testament for your spirit. Attend to worship in your own quiet time and then together as the body of Christ. I know many of you live in that mad dash from moving from one thing to another and you're threatened by the obvious interruptions of storms time after time. <clears throat> it is impossible to remain strong and faithful to Christ without getting alone for prayer and uh, renewal. And so these places that we've named, worship and, and prayer and, and God's Word, these are the places where Jesus shows up. And when He showed up for the disciples, struggling in the storm, they were so very relieved. They had been saved and delivered from another life-threatening storm by the power of Christ and were told the disciples worshipped Him. You really are the Son of God, they said. So please, don't be slow calling out, Lord, can I be with you? Will you receive me? Will you accept me? Will you embrace me? We don't want to be slow placing our trust in Christ. Come, come, because he invites you to come to him today. We're going to end with a popular song that has been on Christian radio through the recent years. No longer slaves. And part of the uh, 
chorus goes, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. So let's stand as we, as we worship. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave. Well, children of God, give thanks for the word that comes to us this day, the promise of Christ who will never leave us nor forsake us, regardless what the storms and the dangers and the threats might be. He will be with us at every point. Praise God for that. Following our benediction, again, I would just remind you we are Moving forward to exit, although some of you I know have to go back down the hallway to uh, retrieve some things. Um, but for the most part, we'd like to separate through the outside aisles and 
you, if you want to go across this way or the, or the door here, the door out this way that leads into the parking lot. Um, I just would also say that it's been at churches across the country where uh, most often the COVID virus has spread um, because folks in church, we like to hug. We like to say hello. We like to do a handshake. Some of, uh, and some of you are at the place now where you're, the vaccine, you've had it, and it's behind you, and you're feeling good. And um, so you know, we, we just leave that in your hands. Uh, but God bless you. May the spirit and the presence of this loving God lift you up and pull you close to himself that you might know his kindness and his love now and always. Amen. Go in peace.